I've noticed that people on the internet love to talk about being superhuman, whether it's superhuman habits, superhuman productivity, you know, there's this whole niche of the internet that's defined by people who are telling you how to squeeze every ounce of productivity out of every second of every day, and, and reading is often a component of this. Now, I've been in this camp a little bit before, and I think productivity is important. Like, productivity is definitely not bad. It's a good thing, because productivity allows you to allocate your attention where you want it to go rather than spending your time and your attention on things that you don't really care about, being productive allows you to get the things that you need to do done while also spending as much time as possible on the things that you love doing. That's how I see productivity. But there's definitely this culture surrounding productivity content sometimes that is just productivity for the sake of productivity, where everything that you do is to be productive and it doesn't really matter what you're working towards so long as you're being productive. And it's really frustrating for me to see reading characterized in this way because I think that reading has so much more to offer than just being an activity that you do to feel productive. I think there's so much more there. When I was thinking about this video, I had a little bit of fun playing with the word superhuman because when it's one word, which is how a lot of people who are using it to talk about productivity, superhuman productivity, right? The super is a prefix. And what does the prefix super mean? Well, it means to be over and above, to be more than. And I think it's worth asking the question, why do you wanna be more than human? Like, what's wrong with being just human? Why is it your goal to be more than somehow, if that's even possible? And I think the funny thing is, if you just put a space in between super and human, suddenly super becomes an adjective. And the adjective super means of high grade or quality. So now superhuman, with the emphasis on the space in between, is just talking about a very good human. Now, personally speaking, I don't think that anything can make you superhuman, one word. I think that's just not possible. And I don't think pursuing reading for the, for the sake of, of trying to become superhuman is valuable. But I do think that reading can help you become a super human with an emphasis on the space in between. I think the natural question is like, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a super human? What does it mean to be a good human? I think that's like the foundational question of a lot of morality. Like it's a really big question. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking like, what are the traits that define humanity to me? If we're putting it in context of a superhuman, someone who's really trying to achieve kind of institutional success, versus a human, I think, I think the one characteristic that I would point to is curiosity. And I think as kids, this is innate to us. We're always asking questions. That's the trope of a toddler, asking why, why this, why that, why this? And then as we age and as we go through these really rigid kind of impatient systems that are designed to make you a superhuman student and a superhuman worker, well, we lose a lot of that curiosity along the way. So I think that this is where reading can be this kind of quiet act of rebellion, where, where rather than doing something because you wanna maximize your productivity, because you wanna, you wanna feel good about it, you can read to explore the questions that get you excited, to explore that innate curiosity that is in your brain and it's in my brain and it's in everyone's brain. Because reading lets you explore any question you want. What is life like in other parts of the world? How did humanity get to where we are today? What does it mean to be in love? Why do I feel this way? Questions like these are on all of our minds at some point or another, and they matter to us. And what matters isn't necessarily the answer, I would argue, but it's the process, it's the exploration. So the real value to reading, in my opinion, is not in arriving at answers or getting through as many books as possible, but the real value is in exploring. It's in listening to what other people have experienced, listening to what they have to say, sitting with it, wrestling with it, and letting it influence you in some way. And I just don't think that this is something that can be compressed or summarized. And so this is why I really love reading, right? Because it allows you to explore your curiosity in a way that not many other things do. You're able to ask these questions and just dive in and read these really broad perspectives from really brilliant people and allow them to influence you. And I just think that's, that's one of the most beautiful things that you can do. So that's the main value add that I think reading has. It's not about being more productive. It's not about you know, doing this because you think it's gonna make you more money or because it's a habit of someone who's successful or, or anything like that. Reading is beautiful because it allows you to explore your curiosity. And that's something that we should all be doing more of because it just makes you a better person. It broadens your perspectives 
and it allows you to think more deeply about what it is that you really value and what it is that you really want to be doing. And I, I really don't want to come across as someone who's bashing on productivity. Um, hopefully I haven't given you that impression, but I, I do care about productivity. And obviously your work and your school are very important. And developing tools to be better at these things uh, is, is a good thing, of course. And reading can be a component of that, absolutely. But I just think it's wrong to see reading only as that. To see it only as this kind of institutional tool that can help you be more successful in these very measured ways. Because, in my opinion, it's just so much more than that. So, of course, go out there, work hard, and study hard, and I would never tell you otherwise. But don't forget to ask questions and to feed that innate curiosity that we all have. I think there are so many forces that are pushing you to be a superhuman, whether it's school or work or whatever, that sometimes you need to push yourself to be a superhuman. Someone who's willing to ask hard questions of themselves and see what adventure those questions take them on. I'd now like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. I've had an Audible membership for a few years now, and I've watched it just get better and better over time. And recently, in my opinion, Audible has just completely leveled things up with their new Audible Plus membership. An Audible Plus membership goes above and beyond by giving you access to thousands and thousands of audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, guided exercise sessions, and so on, all included with your membership. And you can stream or download and listen offline whenever, wherever you want. And on top of that, you still get a credit every month to purchase one of their audiobooks in their massive collection. The audiobook that I've been listening to in the past month has been Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And this is a really cool book. It's a, it's a fictionalized account of a Korean family over four generations uh, who immigrates to Japan uh, kind of over the, the early 20th century, throughout the 20th century. It's really easy to get into the story, to follow along, and it's beautifully written. So if you want to listen to Pachinko or any other audiobook in Audible's massive collection, then you can sign up for a 30-day free trial membership by going to audible.com slash johnfish or texting code johnfish to 500-500. That's audible.com slash John Fish or text John Fish to 500 for a 30 day free trial of Audible membership. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, if you did, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like, comment, leave a dislike, whatever. Uh, I'm just thankful for your attention and I hope you're doing really well out there. All right, my name is John Fish and I will see you again soon. Bye.